Welcome back to our discussion, Federal Digital Transformation in a Post-COVID World, sponsored by Appian here on Federal News Network. My guest today is Jason Adolph, Industry Vice President for Global Public Sector at Appian. I'm your moderator, Tom Temin. And before the break, we were talking about applications, Jason, and uh, tell, tell us a little bit more about the challenges you see that agencies have knowing they need to deploy new applications to get the same functions done, but maybe at much greater scale or brand new functions, depending on, as you put it, a sudden change in policy or the passage of a law, people get impatient. And so there's a higher velocity, I guess, needed in today's world as we move toward post-COVID. What are some of those challenges? Sure. I, you know, th there's a lot. I mean, there's a, a number of significant challenges that we see. And, and frankly, it, it tends to fall into a couple of buckets. So the, the first is, you know, you've been in this industry a long time. Government programs don't get less complex over time. They get significantly more complex over time. And so, you know, what we see is that um, it's one thing when you have fairly binary um, rules to determine things like eligibility or benefits or claims or things like that, especially things that are, that are um, pertinent to this kind of COVID era where, we're, where the government is just giving out large volumes of money. Um, and you know, when you have to think about what it takes to deploy that business logic into an environment, um, that's not a trivial, that's not a trivial activity. And so what you've seen over the last couple of years is there's become this stratification almost where you're either a data scientist that can, that can somehow code that business logic into an application, or you're working with a set of tools that, that, that tries to bridge the gap between what we would see as a business analyst or a policy person who understands what's supposed to happen and how the tool itself actually executes um, the logic that's, that's part of that, that business process or that application. So that's, that's one of the things. The, the other um, is, you know, there's simply this idea that um, I've got to be able to deploy multi-channel experiences um, near instantaneously. And, and so more and more we've seen this, I saw this with the, with the Affordable Care Act and in other programs I've done you know, before this is, um, you've got such a, when, when you have issues like COVID that affect the, the demographics of the United States, whether you're young or old, those people have different ways of interacting with government and significantly different ways and expectations of interacting with government. And so being able to, to not only deploy kind of in a multi-channel environment, but also um, you know, be accessible and have and meet the accessibility standards of the government right out of the box and, and things like that and scale for the types of volumes of these new programs that are, that are unforeseen. Um, I think those are the things that in the past a software developer had to deal with. And now we've kind of moved to this place where we're trying to remove that from the application development equation. We've made it easy for business logic to be instantiated into the tool. We've, we've made scalability a function of you know a, a massive cloud infrastructure we're, we're building accessibility into the design environment so that when you're you know you're building these interfaces that people will use um, you don't have to think about you know whether a screen reader could use it or, or something like that and so I think you're seeing some of those challenges that we're, we're trying to meet in addition to as we, we discussed just the time time horizons for getting things deployed Yes, and there's also the issue, too, of the data required for different multi-channel applications. And we've seen in some of the COVID response that the government lacked access to the data that it itself needed to be able to do these programs in a, in a, with a high degree of integrity and low error rates and so on. And so in some ways, these applications have to have the calls and the reach outs to other databases and data sources also built in. And that probably also took a lot of programming by hand at one time. Right, and, and so again, we've, we've tried to simplify that as well. It's, it's, I, I can tell you from coming from the integrator community, it's one of the hardest things to do in a software development project is get people to agree on one, allowing access to data, two, um, actually agreeing to a, a common data model. Um, and, and so I think what we've tried to do, and I think we've done very well, is we've got this, this kind of concept of, let's leave the data where it sits. You know, if you need, some, if you need to put it somewhere, we can provide that. But in reality, m most of the things where we're trying to build these you know, composite applications rapidly, um, why spend a lot of time trying to go through these massive data migration or replication efforts when the data exists in the format that we need it? And so what we're more looking at is how do we aggregate that into something that's useful quickly? And I, and I think 
um, this concept of, of um, using data where it lays, whether it's in a database or in a web service or a third party service, um, uh, and, and then aggregating that into a, a view um, that we call happy records of that allows you to take action on it. Um, we see what we, what we really see as the benefit of that is the shortening of project schedules just takes less time to build because you're removing that, that you know, massive migration effort from the equation. And before we get into the next segment, which is going to do some more detail, we'll get into some more detail on the low code aspects of all of this. Uh, before the break, is it safe to say that with low code strategies, then people other than traditional coding software developers can make this happen by using the tools of low code? Absolutely. And, and, you know, we like to look at it as kind of a blended team model. You know, we have certainly have tools where, you know, you could go to a, a training class and, and come out and build applications. But, but being honest, I mean, there's, a, there's so much complexity in a lot of these, these government programs. We've reduced the amount of complexity it takes to do this, where, you know, somebody who is non-technical can contribute in a, in a massive way to building applications. And that allows you know, frankly, our agencies and our, our integrator partners to use the resources they already have without going through months and months of training to learn something complicated and proprietary. So, yeah, on one hand, we have the ability to build things extraordinarily quickly with, with non-technical folks, but we also have the ability to, to take on these, you know, very mission-critical applications um, without using tr what would be traditionally very, very expensive and, and you know, uh, folks with many, many years of, of training. All right. On that, we'll take a short break. I'm your moderator, Tom Temin. This discussion is Federal Digital Transformation in a Post-COVID World, sponsored by Appian here on Federal News Network. <laughs> 